Please help me to welcome Dr. Courtney Kessler, who will be speaking today on the topic, Teaching is Never Neutral. Thank you. Today I'll be talking about how teaching is never neutral, specifically how teaching mathematics can never be neutral. Whether people realize it or not, teachers are always sending messages to students about teaching, learning, and the content they teach. They send these messages through the topics they include or don't include, through the activities they ask students to do, and through the forms of participation they demand, and all of these send messages to students about what's important, valid, and valued in mathematics and in school. Take a moment and think back to your own K-12 mathematics experiences. For many people who grew up in the United States, this looked like following rules or procedures, whether they made sense or not, it often looked like sitting in rows quietly while the teacher was up at the front doing mathematics while we just had to simply copy it down. What kind of messages does this send? It sends a message that math doesn't have to make sense. It sends a message that math is largely an independent activity rather than a collective endeavor. And it sends a message that math is for adults and kids just have to copy it down. But we want all kids to learn important, rigorous mathematics. And some kids do, despite these forms of teaching. But for a large number of people in our country, they develop math anxiety. They learn tricks that they soon forget. And they get the unfair message that they're simply not math people. But let's stop for a minute and let's have some fun. Let's do some math. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. I want you to add the numbers 38 plus 38 in your head. Now again, if you grew up in the United States, you might flip this vertically and think 8 plus 8 is 16, carry the 1, 1 and 3 is 4, and 3 more is 7 to get 76. Now while children can memorize this algorithm, they won't naturally solve it this way, nor is it the best way for us as adults to teach kids how to solve it. So let's talk about the way kids do naturally solve it if given an opportunity. Many young children will solve this task by thinking about 30 and 30 is 60, and 8 and 8 is 16, and then they'd, they'd add these partial sums to get 76. Now what's cool about this strategy is they start with the largest parts of the number first, the 30s, so they have an idea of the magnitude of the answer. Another common strategy that we see kids do is they think about 38 and 38 as being 40 and 40, so they add 40 and 40 to get 80, but since they overshot the answer by for too much, they simply subtract it to get back to 76. Now, kids who solve the... Uh, did anybody do it these two ways? Okay. Kids who solve um, this task using these two strategies are less likely to make errors, and they're more likely to remember these ways because they actually make sense. But to be able to do it these ways, they need teachers who will support them. Sorry. And classrooms where they're working together and building on what they know to be able to invent strategies. What kinds of messages would this send? It would send the message that math is a sense-making activity. It also sends the message that kids have the power to do the intellectual work of mathematics. But math is way more than computation. Kids can and should be engaging in problem-solving activities through real-world problem-solving. Now, a lot, of problem, a lot of story problems I hear sound like this. You have four apples, and you get eight more apples. How many apples do you have? And that's OK, but we can make problem solving way more relevant. Like, I know something that's relevant to my kid right now is screen time. You have 60 minutes of screen time over the weekend, and you've already watched 45 minutes. How many more minutes do you have? Doesn't that send a different kind of message? But what I'm also advocating is that teachers take the time to brainstorm with kids about real-life social issues that are relevant to their students, relevant to their students' lives, and to, the, to their students' families' lives, and to our community, and to society. What if math problems sounded like this? How much cafeteria waste does our classroom produce each day? Kids could problem-solve math problems that actually matter. 
and not only problem solve, but they could join in the problem posing process. They could, they could ask questions like, what could we do to reduce this waste? That would send an even different message. It could send the message that math can change our world for the better. Now, sometimes when I've talked to teachers, they've said, shouldn't our role to be neutral in the classroom? But that's just it. There is no way to be neutral because we're always making decisions that will privilege some topics and leave other topics out because there's no way to do everything. So we can either choose to pose problems about apples or we can choose to pose problems to kids that are engaging them in problem posing and problem solving about issues that matter. So what I hope that you take from this is that we consider the messages we're sending to kids because teaching can never be neutral. Thank you.